Shalom, you're watching a very, very special episode of 420 Grams if you're tuning in today because after three years of being head coach of India's national men's senior football team, uh, we're finally getting the opportunity to sit down one-on-one -on -one and have a conversation, an in-depth conversation with Igor Stimac. Uh, the man, of course, needs no introduction. Uh, those of us who are familiar and have been fans of following Indian football uh, for uh, with any sort of interest over the past few years will be well, well, sort of versed with uh, Mr. Steemach's history, both as a player as well as a manager. And of course, we've seen him uh, run the national team over the course of the last three years. So, so lots to talk about. Uh, we've had uh, a few episodes on 420 Grams where we've talked about uh, Igor's work with the national team, successes, failures, and all of those things. Today, we have the man himself. Uh, to give his perspective and, and give us a chance to sort of look inside his brain and pick at his brain and understand uh, what he's looking at, not just today, but also in the next few years uh, as far as Indian football are concerned. Yesterday, of course, as you might have uh, read in the newspapers, uh, Igor met with the, the newly appointed Committee of Administrators to discuss uh, the situation with regards to his contract and his extension. So, uh, so Igor, welcome, first of all, to 420 Grams. Thanks very much for taking the time. I know with, you're with your family and all of that. So, so it's, always, uh, it's always good to you know, uh, have you when you can make the time. Uh, Most welcome. How, how did that meeting go with the COA yesterday? Uh, do we have some good news to give Indian football fans? No, as I tweeted yesterday, the, the meeting was fruitful. It was very open. The, obviously, I didn't know, but they had, uh, prior to our meeting, they had a meeting with the players, our senator players. And obviously, the feedback from them about the work we are providing was quite good. So the COA members were really happy about what national team has done in the past three years and what's been achieved. Uh, which I don't, I don't consider great achievement, as I told you. Maybe mm. yes, in regards to the circumstances we were finding ourselves in with pandemic and not being able to have camps as planned and uh, spend enough time on the training pitch. But everybody expected us to qualify. That's for sure. And in regards to that, there is no great achievement yet to talk about. But what we can speak about is the way we performed the way the boys played, they, they behaved, and the different kind of football we presented in Kolkata in the pre qualifying matches, which everybody was happy about to see finally. And that's what I say always. You give me enough time to work with these boys, I will provide. Mm. If you don't give me enough time, do not expect anything, and please do not criticize that. Because that, for football to work, for the players to perform, we need time to work together. We need time to spend together. We need time to adjust things in a proper way. And that's the only way football works. Fair enough. So, so, so we're then just proceeding further with that, like, are they going to give you the kind of time you need to make India into the kind of project? Because three years ago, when we met yeah. you at your first press conference, we, we talked about like aims to, and what it would require to eventually get India to, let's say, a World Cup. Right? That takes a lot of time and effort. Yeah. Uh, you know, as, as I joined the AIFF and I was contracted first time, I was never putting pressure on anyone about how long my contract is going to be because I was very confident that I'm going to provide and fulfill the goals. That's one mm -hmm. point. That's mm -hmm. what I do now again, because the, the terms of my contract are the, not the main priority at this stage. You know, I will negotiate the terms either with COA or with the future president or future technical committee. That's not an issue for me. As I said, for me to stay there, the most important thing is, are you going to provide me enough time to work with the players? Mm. Because if, if there is no such option, then I need to think twice about staying or looking for another job. And I have, I, as I said, I do have offers. I do not negotiate with anyone at the moment because I'm fully loyal to the contract I have. I will be patient, I will wait. If COA members are going to discuss and provide an offer, we're going to sit down, talk, and we're going to find an agreement, that's for sure. I told them, do not 
waste your time on me and my contract at the moment because you have priorities. There are certain time frames in my paper which they need to fulfill about the constitution and making sure election is done on time. So that's the priority for them at the moment. My contract can wait, and that's not an issue. But other things are the issue, and that's definitely the truth. Fair enough. Uh, so, so uh, by that, do you mean to say that we have to wait till the co the constitution and all of that is resolved, and then elections will happen, or do you see things happening before that? Because uh, because we because are I'm, going, I'm we have less sure, than a year to I'm move. Not sure. I'm not sure in, in what stage they are at the moment with the constitution and election procedure and all that. What I certainly know that they were doing and giving some other contracts to the AIFF. So they have the possibility if they think that's right. If they don't think it's right to, to go into, into giving a, a long-term contract to the coach, uh, then be it. I don't have problem with that. I said to them, you have my full support in what you do. Uh, you don't need to be worried about me uh, running away somewhere. It will not happen. If you come forward with some, some offer or some contract, we're going to discuss, but please make sure that we don't get any kind of ban from FIFA or not, not uh, uh, fulfilling the, the expected expected time frames which were given to us you know it's mm. very simple you know. all right so 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 i guess then we'll have to wait and watch and uh, perhaps the ball is now in the coa's court in terms of that contact extension uh, as you said uh, the interesting thing and as jdeep was pointing out on the show yesterday that we did as well was that uh, in the aiff it seems that contracts of other coaches and uh, etc are being uh, extended so so we are really unsure at this point why the delay, uh, especially given the limited amount of preparation time that we have for the, uh, for the tournament that's coming up, the major tournament that kind of we've all been focused on for the last three years. So not, not really sure what's going on, but I guess uh, not too much you can do about that either at this point, Igor. How are preparations no, proceeding? No, no. What, what's your plan uh, for the next few months, irrespective of what happens with the contract? You know, at the moment, I'm working with uh, the Rabishek uh, on finding the opponents for a September camp. But my hands, as you said, are uh, quite tight uh, uh, there because I don't know if we're going to get approval for a longer camp. If we don't get approval for a longer camp, then I will not accept playing against stronger opponents because I don't have enough time to prepare well. I would rather choose whatever is available there from weaker sides, lower rank sides, so we make sure to make our, our life easier. You know, as simple as that. As much time as we get as a national team uh, to work, to prepare ourselves, we can uh, accept any opponent whatsoever. We don't have fear facing anyone. But mm. depends on the time we are given to prepare ourselves. That's that's for sure. So we are blocked at the moment. We do know what we have to do. As you as you probably aware, we have two camps, not four like before, because there is a World Cup coming in in uh, November and December. For that oh, reason, sure. there will be no there will be no October and November FIFA windows at this stage, only September FIFA window for two friendly international games, and in 2023 March window uh, for two international friendly games also. And that's all we got, you know. After that, we need to see how we can organize ourselves because many things are there to be discussed with other stakeholders because we have uh, Santos Trophy, we have Supper Cup, uh, which will be played until very late in May. We have ISL playoffs, uh, uh, semifinals and finals. You know that end of February, ISL regular season will finish, which will be followed by semifinals and final game, which means that once again, we're going to have four clubs involved until mid-March in the competition and seven clubs will be waiting and training, training and waiting the Supper Cup to start. So mm. all these things uh, in regards to the national team candidates need to be discussed, need to be measured, need to be adjusted to what national team needs because that, that's a long process of planning 
uh, making sure that things are precise, that things are certain, that we don't come to next year, January or February, without knowing who we play, where we're going to stay, which hotels we are going to choose. You know, this is not kind of a kind of a approach we need if we want to do well at the, at the Asian Cup. Hmm. Have you sort of made any kind of proposal to them in terms of what you want uh, exactly? Like how many days, when, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Yeah, always respectful to what has been planned, you know, because ISL is there and finally the season will go on for eight months as we were always trying to, to, to do. Uh, it didn't start it already because uh, obviously pandemic stopped all our plans. The ISL was supposed to start in such manner uh, in reconstructed way two years ago, but all the plans were destroyed. National team was supposed to have two months cup in Turkey and Austria two years ago, but that was destroyed. I, I arranged 10 friendly games during these, these two months of preparation. Everything was wiped out. How I say, and we were left there without having possibility playing football in India, uh, without having possibility preparing ourselves for the friendly game. We were playing abroad for two years in front of the in front of the uh, uh, our host uh, supporters with the referees who are always you know pushing a little bit on the home side, and all these things can can affect whatever you're trying to do. And obviously, the, the worst thing and the worst point I was having fear of was not getting enough time you know when i just remember last time when we went to bahrain i had a half a team uh, coming to bahrain one and a half hour prior to the game to the kickoff is that a proper preparation for the game it's not it's not we cannot expect the team to do well and i feel sorry for the players i i'm not and never feel sorry for myself and i don't mind facing criticism and being pointed finger at me, you know, for this reason or that reason. But if the coach is not given time, proper time to prepare the team, to do man-to-man -man management job, to explain things and wrongdoings to the players, to, to work on the pitch with them on the on the final third combinations and options on ball possession, on accuracy in passing, on mid-press, high-press, uh, uh, how are you going to expect things to happen? And why this happened now? It's not a miracle. It's because we worked hard for two months. It's because we trained every day twice, you know, because we were doing man-to-man -man management. We were showing the players what was what has been wrong, what needs to be done, how it needs to be changed. That's, it's, a, it's a huge process. Football is a huge process. People can see only what's happening on the pitch during 90 minutes. But what's happening prior to that is the most important thing. You know, that's just uh, the pitch, 90 minutes on the pitch is just, uh, uh, I would say, full amount of the energy and the time spent on the training pitch in three days, five days, seven days, or two months prior to that. Mm. And as much time as you are given and possibility to work with your players, you have better possibility to perform good. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, you're right. I think. Uh, back when, and you, I think you you must be well aware of this. Back in 2011, when India qualified uh, through the uh, at that time there, there was a backdoor to qualification through the Challenge Cup, uh, and we, we made it to after 30 years almost we made it to the Asian Cup. So so at that time uh, Bob Houghton was the coach, and so for 11 months the, he had the whole team together, and that's why uh, I, I think despite the results not going well, at least the team was uh, able to achieve. A standard of football that was beyond what we had seen earlier. Unfortunately yeah, for you, that, that football, is not a possibility. Yeah, yeah, I know and I understand. And and uh, the the football, no coach can guarantee results. Yeah, but I I speak about performances. So we need to make sure now we get enough time to perform well and to make Indian football followers proud about our performance. I'm not saying we're going to achieve great results because results are in God's hands. You can be much better side during 90 minutes and lose the game and lose it heavily, you know. And so the result is in God's hands. But performance is what makes people happy. The way you play, the way uh, 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 you approach the football game, and, and I'm the coach who is always trying to convince our players that they need to go out to express themselves without fear, without fear of making mistakes, because mistakes will happen always. But 
if that mistake affects you in a way that you cannot perform at your best later on, that's the mm. problem we face. You know. Mm. Yeah. So, so, so now that you've brought us into this this part of the conversation quite naturally, Igor, uh, what what I was thinking of as a structure for the rest of this conversation is to look back as the, at the first press conference that that you had uh, together with Isaac Doru at that time, who was the technical yeah. uh, director, uh, and the and the kind of ideas that you had wanted to achieve with the team so far. So, so before we go to the broader things, specifically with regards to the senior national team, the things that you had mentioned at that time, and we can maybe go by them one by one, and how and you can tell us. I how remember you... very well everything. Right, of course. So, so first up, uh, as a as an issue, or, or, or first the good part, I think we all noticed that Anwar Ali was even then a bright spark uh, coming through the system, uh, and you spotted that as well, and and it's good to see him now finally back in the in the senior team setup and uh, bright future hopefully, because that's a key position. We'll get to that, but uh, first up was the lack of concentration that you saw in the previous games, and, and the lack of. Uh, tactical knowledge as well as movement so how how have have we progressed on those fronts and and how where are we going Ooh. we went far away we went far away with tactical knowledge with uh, composure with keeping tight lines with defending together and attacking together in regards to the previous football where we had only counter attacking football uh, trying to defend in numbers, obviously, but making sure that no more than four players are going forward and six players sitting back. That was quite obvious to me after doing a deeper analysis on what has been done. Mm -hmm. And we were doing well there. You cannot say anything about that because three performances at the Asian Cup with uh, Mr. Constantine were very good for India, apart from Bahrain game, which I would approach totally differently, you know, because because that's that's a very less chance in such a way playing a football game that you can survive throughout 90 or 95 minutes, you know, mm. but the rest of it was really, really good, apart from conceding two silly goals from, from straight passes behind the back four against Emirates after missing a couple of good, good chances, you good know. Chances. So I wouldn't go much into that I would concentrate on what we've been doing in the past three years. And that's exactly what I said. And I was obviously spot on in what we can achieve, how we can change. And I said on my first press conference, that's a long process. On that process, we're going to go through suffering and we need to be patient. Mm -hmm. What I expect everyone to understand what national team needs. I expect all the stakeholders to put national team needs as a priority there if we want to promote football in India in a proper way. Because I explained to everyone then, then that no club playing in Asian Cup, Champion League, will promote football in India in a way that national team can do. And that's the main reason why national team needs to be supported much, much stronger by all the stakeholders in India. Yeah, and why it was so bizarre to see what was happening with that ticketing story in Calcutta. But but how how is the league fitting into uh, this growth of tactical knowledge and movement, uh, Igor? Because an important part of what you had spoken about and and Isaac as as well was to uh, kind of start to build a nationwide philosophy, get people on the same page, and have better communication. Uh, of course, it's been hit by the pandemic, but how's it going? It's going really good because ISL is helping a lot. You know, ISL has brought uh, many, many more good things to Indian football than, than any bad things whatsoever. You know, it's helping a lot because all the foreign coaches who were there were helping the national team to rise with their work, although they didn't have time, like me. They didn't have time. If you consider that only in last two seasons, the foreign coaches who were employed by ISL clubs had four months of pre-season to work with the players and pre prepare the, the teams for the uh, bubble situation where players will just play games without possibility of, of spending too much time on the training pitch. Mm. That's not kind of a work which can help in a great manner to the national team, but it helped because all these communications we, we had, and I had fantastic, fantastic relationship with Manolo Marquez, which I appreciate with uh, Owen Cole uh, uh, there, with Ivan Vukumanovic throughout last year, 
all the time uh, with Sergio, Sergio Lopera, with, with Juan Ferran, with, with all the guys. I, I can go individually and mention all of them to you, but we were in continuous touch about the players, about positions, discussing everything and, and keeping in touch and making sure that uh, we benefit all from what we do because mm. we need to behave like one body and we are one family. You know, mm. if we don't stick together, if we don't work together, Indian football will not go forward. And obviously, I depend on their work. My work depends on their work because they have possibility to spend more time with the players than I do. And then I need to find out much more about the players which they have under their control because they will know much more about them. I can mm. see them for seven days when we have the camp and they spend all the time, all the time with these coaches. So their information on the players, it's very valuable to me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so good. So it's good to hear that, of course, you have that communication and that access to information. Uh, still, of course, I guess gaps are there. That's why. And because those gaps are there is why you need the camps to be longer. Uh, what do you see as steps towards kind of Reducing those gaps, uh, obviously more games, but but I mean, uh, let's hear you say it. I guess everyone knows that you know, and it's going to happen now. So we shouldn't be complaining about that. But this season should bring more than forty games to the players, mm. which is fantastic. Uh, football be, will be promoted in a much better way. There will be more competitions, which is great for all the players. They will be under the process of the training uh, uh, and they will keep fitness level condition for eight months, which is great, but it's also danger. It's mm. danger because they are not used to it. So yeah. now we need to see uh, what effects this is going to have on the players' muscle strength, on their, on their weak points, you know. Mm. So how are they going to handle that that in such a long season, you know? Mm. But obviously, there will be much more time between the games for them to recover, which is really good. There will be no need for any coach whatsoever to push any player with minor injuries to go on the pitch and perform, which we had many problems with in the past. If I speak with the national team, I'm, I'm kind of a coach who never allows a player with a minor injury to go and play because... I consider that such player cannot help the team. He is hurting himself first of all. Uh, he is putting himself in a grave danger, and I consider that even a less good player can help much more the team if he is 100% fully fit than the one with a minor injury going out and risking everything for the team. You know, so these are the things which are which are now much much better, uh, and for that reason we should we should be optimistic about the future but also we need to take good care about the players that's why i'm insisting now on on all coaches prior to start the preseason to do isokinetic tests on each player because there is a huge problem in a muscle strength disproportion in india with the players they didn't go through great development programs and the muscle strength between hamstrings and quadriceps are such a huge problem and issue for these boys. And they are getting injured after making a few longer sprints, which mm. is obvious Too many ASL injuries also uh, uh, in our players. And we have a situation where some talented boys are just disappearing from the football pitch after playing one season in ISL. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't yeah. allow that because if anyone is investing eight to 10 years in the in development of one player, then these things need to be sorted. We cannot uh, risk putting these players in such great danger uh, uh, without making good and proper uh, uh, workout on the muscle strength, especially on the hamstring side. Hmm. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, you had also mentioned that defending is what leads to good results. Now, okay, we can talk Always. about... We can talk about style of play later, but yeah, I think and all, all I, I guess anyone who's played uh, on that side of the pitch uh, would have that approach. And I, I have to say I 100% concur with you on that. So in the context of our defensive lineup, uh, we talked a little bit about how they are organized and how they are doing much better at uh, some of those aspects of things. Uh, but uh, competition for places over the past three years, how has that progressed? You see, when we entered the process, we were quite sure that the biggest difficulty we're going to face into changing the mindset of the players, because 
the team which was there, which we took over, uh, uh, had certain way of play and they had habit to play in such system, you know. And especially if these players are uh, much experienced in certain age, if they are 26 and, 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 and more, then mm. it's difficult to change them. No, never mind how much time you get to work with them. You know, it's, it's difficult. If, if someone puts them under pressure, they will not even try to pass the ball from the back. You know, so we were quite sure and aware of that problem we're going to face. And that's why the only exit out of such a problem was opening door wide open to the youngsters, you see, and giving the chance anytime we get to these youngsters to go out on the pitch and perform to gain the, the experience and mature quicker. That was really important to us. And that was the suffering part we went through, you know, mm -hmm. because when you go with the youngsters in numbers, uh, trying to give them the chance to mature quicker, you are facing a grave danger in losing many games, which are there to lose because they are friendly games, especially if they are not official friendly games, then that's a great, great opportunity to do such a thing, you know, because you are not losing the points on rankings or you are not risking anything but being criticized from the public who are followers, you know, so that, that's not a, a damage, I would say. So we survived that process. And we got to a point now when we, where we have uh, 38 players which are there. And great, great mixture of youngsters, uh, four to five senator players, and mid-age players who are also our strength. And three years of work has been finished. It's been done in great style. I'm proud of the boys, how they handled everything with so many problems in the past two years, especially. And we are on a, on a good path to do great things. I'm telling you, because if you take out Sunil, Gurprit, and Sandesh mm. out of this team, then average age of our first 11 is 22. And we are the youngest team in Asia. And having in mind that our qualifiers for the World Cup are coming in a couple of years, then it's quite obvious that these players will, will be much more mature, that they're going to have much more experience. And with the senators who will still be there to help them rise, we can expect great things. And not to forget that uh, reducing number of foreign players in ISL helped us a lot. That's what the thing we insisted from the very beginning. It took us a couple of years to come to three plus one uh, rule, but you could see how much positive effect that had on Indian players going through, showing up and proving themselves. And that's one thing we need to keep following and going on. That's why I'm now pointing out the importance of thinking, not requesting. Let's start thinking about making I-League only Indian League without foreign players. I have nothing against foreign players because they bring, they bring many good things to Indian football. Indian players are rising up next to them uh, learning from them, especially if you choose character boys, boys who come to India and they are ready to fight for the team and for the shirt, not those who are just walking by, you know, and money pickers. This, we had great foreign players last season in the league who were making huge difference on the pitch for some teams and, and that's great, you know. So, so I appreciate their effort, their work, their help uh, to Indian football, but I league, there is no point of having foreign players there. Whoever tells me that there is a good point and reason to keep foreign players in I league, I'll sit down with him, discuss, I will give hundred arguments against it. Mm. You know. Yeah, no, fair enough. I guess uh, you had mentioned this, uh, I think, in one of your post-match uh, press conferences as yes. well uh, at the AFC qualifiers. Uh, and we were discussing it a bit and there were, of course, those in favour and those not. Uh, Sudeva and Indian Arrows, two clubs already exist that largely that that played with only uh, indian players in the i league and i think uh, it is potentially a, mo a model that can be followed along also with perhaps some kind of age uh, age uh, regulations it's, it's not that... only potentially i wouldn't use that 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 uh, you know it's necessary it's necessary for indian national team to become strong in the near future because you ask me many times, not you personally, but your colleagues, where mm. are you going to find Sunil Chetri? Mm. But I'm asking you, 
Where I'm going to find new Sahal, new Tapa, new Brandon Fernandez, where I'm going to find new Anwar Ali, new Jackson, new, new Suresh, or, or I don't know who. If we keep all these most important place, play, uh, places in the team for foreign players. Hmm. And we don't have possibility of involving POI players in the national team. Where are we going to find them? If we are not opening the door for these boys to, to perform on these positions, that's impossible. It's, it's simple. Two plus two. You know, so we need to be uh, very wise. We need to use logic here. Are we there to help the national team become great or not? But, but Igor, you yourself have hardly picked any I-League players for the national team setup. You know, even though there are more, at least in these key positions, you're, you're talking about the spine of the team uh, for sure. So what happens is that a player comes in and maybe gets a chance to play in the I-League in one of these positions, does well, is picked up by an ISL club and then goes and sits on the bench. You, you don't see or hear of him again in many it's situations. Been, yeah. Yeah, Listen, it's been because... proven, it proven in different occasions that players, uh, the best players from my league, coming to ISL, they cannot get place in the team and play. Mm. And foreign coaches are there who I discuss all these things. Mm. You know, so it's obviously that there is a there is a gap, uh, a decent gap between the quality of football and individual class between ISL and I league. Mm. And at the moment, I'm not saying that will not change. But it can change with lots of effort, lots of work, many more hours spent on the training pitch. But as per now, I see I-League as a great filter and the way for a young players to mature there, to be recognized by, by ISL coaches and scouts. They've been signed to, to ISL. The, the fees paid to I-League clubs, which is good compensation for the work they've been done, and that's one of the main reasons why they need to look at that option because producing player is the of the most important part uh, uh, for Indian future. Producing players, and I League should should consider in a great manner that there is option for them for a great cash flow from ISL to I League. Producing players and transferring them to ISL for compensation. Substantial fees now happening in the last two years. This is kind of a way of how you can support your club and finance your club. Yeah, the, the existence of a transfer market does uh, add a new element. Are we, uh, not, it's not it a was very, not happening before. It was not yeah, happening it's not before. at all. Yeah, because yeah. because of players, clubs always be offering players only single year contracts and and sort of it was very much a very, very much a. Now sort of... they need to make longer plans with the players when they recognize the talent and they 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 invest work uh, time work with them couple of years and they sell him good to to ISA. They mm. can earn substantial amounts of money. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, I think one of the final points, uh, Igor, I think you've covered many of the things, working with clubs, communication, uh, all of those aspects. Uh, even the league structure, we've talked about broadly, what you want from it, uh, what should happen with the I-League uh, and all of that. Uh, promotion and relegation, of course, we've spoken about these things very often, so no point getting into it. Yeah, that's the all involved in the, in the roadmap, you know, and, and yeah. that's, been, that's been defined and it will happen soon. What what we are hoping that uh, soon, in a few years' time, or sooner, better than later, we're going to have ISL League of 20 clubs and I League 20 clubs, you mm. know. But good clubs, good clubs, stable clubs, yeah. not clubs with financial problems, without facilities, without infrastructure, and without mm. support uh, from, from stakeholders, you know. So mm. it's really important. Yeah. And it definitely it'll be interesting for, to watch how that unfolds because... Uh, at the moment, it's uh, simply a question of spending the money, having the club, and then playing playing in that competition. Yes. But it needs Surviving. to be, a, yeah, it needs to be a much much more comprehensive approach, I guess. Yes. So, so finally, how how has progress been in terms of uh, synchronicity? I think is the word that uh, Isaac used in that press conference to talk about your philosophy of getting everyone on the same page. Uh, how, how is that project pro, uh, proceeding with the age group teams uh, and women's teams as well? Are, are we coming up with a comprehensive 
uh, kind of identity because like you like you guys both mentioned it's not a static thing it's not like you can approach every game or every situation with the same same mindset no obviously not you know we, you mentioned earlier that uh, uh, the most important thing in a football game is making sure you don't concede goals but there are different and various ways how you approach that point you can defend your goal very high and away from your goalkeeper you can defend it in the middle of the pitch or you mm. can sit back very deep mm. so these are the things which define the performance at the end of the day you know from johan cruyff era you had you had one wonderful uh, thought about defending your goal in front of the opposition goal and that was the high press immediate reaction and transition after losing the ball high press winning the ball back again and making sure that you keep the ball as long as possible because while the ball is in your legs opponent doesn't have a chance to score and that's barcelona philosophy you know then you have the teams who are playing only uh, straight football after winning the ball striking fast quickest as possible like liverpool does most of the times but this high press involves all the pitch mm. from each position you know so and then you have also the clubs like real madrid who can do anything with the quality of the players they have with the with the experience they have they can they are not using high press because obviously age of that team is not allowing them to to go and risk so much because they would run out of energy very soon with a high press but they know how to defend with their experience they know how to close the gaps and they have so much quality from the middle of the of the pitch to strike with these youngsters they have on the on the wide positions at the moment with modric with benzema with toni kroos casemiro all these guys they can hurt you badly and that what they shown to everyone to man city to liverpool to to everyone there you know so it's about philosophy our philosophy is uh, playing without fear and performing well playing without fear because I would I could feel earlier that there was a fear involved there you know let's not suffer badly today playing against better and ranked teams and you could see that and it was exposed in in uh, stats we were getting after the games you know you know uh, ball possession huge difference in regards to the opponents uh, shots on target huge difference we were barely passing the half line a couple of times during the 90 minutes mm. so we wanted to change that to change that you need to change the mindset mindset to change that you need to spend a lot of time with the players on the pitch you need to speak to them a lot you need to show them the clips go through the mistakes make sure that they learn how to prevent such mistakes not there at the spot where mistake was done far far earlier because when goalkeeper receives the goal it's never his fault prior to that five mistakes were made at least on the whole pitch prior to that you know sometimes people people say and rubbish goalkeepers for receiving silly goals but what happened prior to that how the opposition team get in front of the goalkeeper can you tell me hmm. who made those mistakes you know so it's about whole team compactness tight lines reactions making hmm. sure that whoever does wrong you make it right for him uh, being ready to sacrifice yourself Uh, that's the point where we came uh, very far with our players with the national team because everyone there is involved in both transitioning attacking and defending uh, we are keeping much better the the tightness between the lines at the moment our reaction after losing the ball is much much better uh, we are not going through the game uh, unconsciously anymore we are well aware and we are conscious about all what's going on on the pitch now and that's what i'm proud of and the under 19s and the under 16s uh, are they even further down in regards the... to that i am as as a national team coach and under 23 coach i'm responsible for for uh, these teams and obviously taking care of indian arrows program and and uh, selection there uh, not involved in scouting players there obviously because i don't have so much time for that but uh, venki was heavily involved with the with the senior national team for two years and we made sure that program from the national team was passed to indian arrows to to follow these boys to make sure they are well prepared uh, for isl games later on once they go through the indian arrows project and that's been very fruitful as you can see so i always say 
whenever you criticize people from AIFF, if you have good reasons, make sure you give compliments for good things which happen there, you know, mm. because Indian Arrows is a great project, needs to keep going on. We all need to make sure that project survives and in the near future, that project should join myself. Let's not forget about that, you know. It will give us a great possibility of keeping these players, say hello to everyone and say goodbye now. <laughs> Bye. I and sure. you know and these are the things I'm, I'm trying to be aware of and make sure to help everyone there involved okay. Okay. this is a future player you see probably for Croatia <laughs> he was there with, yeah he was with Mbappé and Luka Modric there when Croatia faced France on the pitch he was with the players there yeah yeah He's got he's got the right pedigree for it, I guess. Uh, right pedigree and left footed, left footed. Left footed. Know, these guys yeah. are special. These guys are special. Son. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, uh, unlike us who uh, try to play on the left side only because there were not enough players, so there's a better <laughs> chance to get picked. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so. No, so uh, so fair enough with the with the under 16s, under 19s, that uh, process continuing. Um, arrows and uh, like you rightly said, I mean, arrows is a project that we've appreciated and and complemented right from its uh, creation back in I think 2009 probably uh, was when in different forms it started uh, to have a team in that could help India prepare for uh, the Asian Cup in a different way, and then it was carried on as a long term project. And it's a yes, it's a great it way to... for the World Cup under seventeen also you know as well which was great yeah. to to have in India and now the the girls under seventeen which will which will go on it's another great great achievement for AIFF you know I just hope uh, and we should check how much we can do about this this Asian Cup now and the possibility of joining the host host uh, to host this this cup if if there is a willingness by our side to participate if there is a possibility from the government part to, to help us organize that because that would give us enormous chance of qualifying. You need to see that uh, there is a possibility also because China was supposed to be the host and once they, they, they uh, decided to get out of the picture, now it's, it's a good possibility of talking to, to AFC to divide the host sports to different countries, not only to one, because it's difficult that one country can prepare itself in 12 months time or eight months time to mm. host so many nations and make sure that everyone is organized well. But if you involve six countries uh, to host each, each one of the groups, that would be fantastic tournament. That would be amazing tournament, never, never seen before in Asia. You know, they, they need to open the picture and look wider side of it and benefits for football. Mm. Yeah, and 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 also considering that we are still, uh, you know, the pandemic is still still in some ways continues, and there will be outbreaks, perhaps different kinds of things going on. We see a number of players, for example, have pulled out of Wimbledon this time with COVID nineteen also. So so it yeah, also but we should we should. We should we should forget about that in a way that the life should stop because of it. Because no, no. I, I tell no, you, no. in Europe, no one cares anymore. No one cares anymore. Uh, you know, life goes on. Uh, we are trying to take care about elderly ones and the, the, the everyone with the chronic problems. But young people and people with a good health, they, they don't face any issues with such a problems. There is a vaccine, uh, which is uh, obligatory and that's it. Life needs to go on. We need to live our lives. We need to enjoy football and other things in life and, and live normally. So if someone gets positive, he will be quarantined. And that's it. There is a test possible to do and get the results in five minutes. So there is no issues whatsoever. Yeah, we are, we are definitely much uh, better positioned to deal with, these, uh, yeah. with this uh, now. And, and that's, that's an interesting suggestion. Hopefully... I think the AFC have uh, extended the deadline for those bids now yes. by by another couple of weeks. So hopefully uh, somebody will jump in with that suggestion because uh, you're right, hosting a 24 uh, team competition in in a few months, not too many people in a position uh, in Asia to be able to do. Very limited, I would say, rather very limited. 
number and of countries, if, and I'm not sure that any country can host in a proper way uh, such a huge uh, 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 tournament without proper preparation. And the time left uh, is not giving you uh, optimism to to prepare well. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Uh, I think Igor, that pretty much uh, sums up most of the stuff. Uh, I guess just with regards to a couple of things that you also brought up in your uh, last comments. One is uh, in terms of the national team and and the management of the national team. Now, of course, there is one part of it which is the the politics of it, how how that goes on, and you also being mm-hmm. uh, from a highly political part of the world, I'm sure that's as much in your uh, system as it is in ours in India. But the other part is doing your job and 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 the management of it, and we've seen. Unfortunately, a series of uh, whether it's planning mistakes or execution mistakes, just small things that reflect a kind of careless attitude towards the national team. Even though some some of the people involved in those jobs are you know highly paid professionals, uh, mm-hmm. what's your interaction been like in that scenario, and how do you respond to to when when things affect particularly national teams, irrespective of what the age groups are? Listen, I deal with what I got, you know. You tell me that there is a time for you, three days, and I need to organize myself for three days' work and do my best. Mm. And uh, you could notice that I, I haven't been complaining much, but what I was not happy about is not being given enough chance to promote football and speak about football. And mm. that's why why I was angry. That's one of the reasons why, why I went and organized PC by myself without support of AIF. And people need to understand there is no miscommunication between me and anyone there. And I'm not here in India to point finger at anyone. I am paid and contracted to give advice, to help in everything what's possible to make Indian football greater. And that's, that's what I do. But uh, keeping me away from uh, answering questions or giving interviews, it's not the way we're going to help football. Uh, if... I give advices and I suggest something and that something uh, is being ignored by some of the stakeholders. And then I'm not given chance to speak about it. We have a problem. And there became, a, I would say, disappointment coming at me because when I was joining India, I was so ambitious and happy about the greatest challenge in the world in, in football world. Believe me, being in charge of Indian football national team, it's by far the greatest challenge in football world. There is no greater one. Considering at the time when I was taking over, the, how short was the season, how uh, uh, the number of the games players played, the off-season time, the weakness on the muscle strength. Uh, so, so there was a All huge, huge yeah. you know, and then you expect everyone to push forward. You expect everyone at the beginning to push forward. But of course, uh, some things for others are other priorities, other parts, they have their priorities. And then you feel left there in the middle of nowhere and finding yourself in a, in a situation where you cannot see the exit. You cannot find the points where you can feel optimism mm. about what you need to do. Mm. But I said, okay, problem is there and there must be a solution. Mm. If we go through the process of suffering, without consequences, we're going to get to the point where we're going to become recognized as a success. And we never lost the faith in what we do. That was the most important thing. We never lost the faith. I felt sorry because you will remember at the first press conference, I said, especially to the journalists, you are part of the family. Don't point fingers at us heavily. Let us go through the process without criticizing too much. Let's try to keep positive. Let's try to recognize things. I'm available to you anytime you like to speak about, to answer your questions and to explain 
what we do and why we're doing it that way. But obviously, most of the people present there and who heard me talking didn't remember or they didn't want to remember. I had also a huge part of those who didn't want me there to become a coach. They were supporting some other candidate at the beginning and they were surprised when I was appointed. So from the very beginning, they were they were just waiting on me to slip down, I don't know, against Tajikistan or against um, North Korea, or whoever was there, you know, it was just a reason more for them to blame me or my capacities as a coach. And I don't have problem with that because they are very quiet now. I don't see them. I don't hear them, you know, and it's not really important to me. But for those who could hear me and who could understand what I was saying, and they were not there for us, they have another chance now to join the trade, to start behaving differently, to start understanding football and how it works, football process in a different way. This is a new chance for them to become more positive about what we can achieve if given proper time for work. All right. Fair enough, Igor. I think we'll wind up on, you know, yesterday the, the, there was a bit of news, unfortunate news, uh, coach being sent back from the under-17 uh, women's football camp. Uh, you have experienced football around the world and yes. uh, women's football, of course, is is growing and, and Europe, again, is, is quite central to the growth of, of women's football. Uh, what kind of uh, advice are you giving on that front to uh, whoever is, is listening? in order to have safeguards in place that ensure that particularly young teams, young national teams and club sides, uh, you know, these kind of incidents are reduced as much as possible. And when they happen, there's a system in place that allows uh, for it to, you know, be brought to attention and, and sorted out. No, listen, I, I don't know uh, too much about it. It would be, uh, I would make injustice uh, doing comments. All I know is what I read from the newspapers, obviously misconduct is there. And that's the reason why the coach was sent at home and he needs to face heavy consequences. If it's uh, proved that he was doing misconduct with, with some of the young girls there, you know, so that's, that's all I can say. Shouldn't happen, never, never. Needs to be sanctioned heavily, not only by the football organization, uh, court of Justice needs to take measures there. All right. Okay. All right, uh, Igor, we leave it at that. We've had you for more than an hour. We'll let you also get back to uh, your your day. And, and uh, on, of course, the note that you left us with, which is that you are always available to us uh, to talk football and to discuss things and, and to seek your... Uh, you, actual to understand what your thought process is behind it. Because one of the issues that we've had as journalists particularly those of us who for the past two years have been completely cut out from the system, uh, you know, zero communication. If you do not have any communication, then you can't understand what the process might be, what the thought might yeah, be. Then I have the problem. Then I have the problem because you yeah. start guessing. You yeah, cannot, we are guessing. You yeah. cannot yeah. make your judgments uh, adequately. When you start guessing, then you go the wrong way you do, yeah. because you know what's happening inside. That's why my anger was coming there. That's why I didn't want anyone from AIF being involved in my PC after the Asian Cup qualifiers, because mm. that's my words. In a way, I want to pass to the public mm. with everyone welcome from, the, from your family, from the media, mm. to be there, to hear, to put questions in front, you know. And that's the way it needs to be done, because I, I will re, uh, remind you again, we are all same family. We, you are very important to, to us and to our job. To know as much as possible about what we do, how we are planning to achieve things, and the process we're going to go through. And that's going to make your job easier, not to Absolutely. go there, Absolutely. the public, create public opinion yeah. with the guessing. You know, without that's guessing, good with, for anyone. with actual information. That's, with actual information. That's right. I was looking at, at, I would say, all your shows. You know, you, you, you were surprised last time when I told you that. But I am a person which is committed to the job. And public opinion is very important to me. And you are the ones who are creating public opinion. It's not me. You are the ones. Because how you see, how you guess, how much you know about national team coach work, 
That's mm. what you trespass to the public. Absolutely. And that's why I want you to stay close to us to get as much information which is needed for you to, to inform the public, public properly. Because mm. I, I mentioned last time, uh, football knowledge is very low in India. You know, mm. some of the boys who are there and making comments, you know, play, coach, 20 games per season, they don't even know that you cannot do that. You know, there is five FIFA windows during the year with two friendly games, which is 10 games per year, including qualifiers. Yeah. And you cannot get the players from the clubs besides yeah. that. That's Whenever it. you want. Yeah. We need to teach these people what are the football rules, rules and what national team coach is there they're uh, having in the hands, you know. Absolutely. So yeah. let's let's change a few things also in regards to, to this communication. From my part, it will be the same. I will be available for you guys there always. I hope that yeah. we're gonna sort out things in the AIFF in regards to that and we're gonna we're gonna have open door for everyone and welcome for the critics and for those who are seeing different, you know to put the questions, to discuss football, to speak about plans and to work together. Absolutely. On that on that note of good communication and optimism, uh, Igor Simaj, thank you very much for the time you have given to 420 Grams. We will, of course, have lots of questions, not always be in agreement, but but hopefully uh, be able to sit, uh, sit at a table and, and talk about it as long as it's uh, football. Uh, thanks once again. And, and all the best for the coming months. Uh, we hope to hear uh, more with regards to the preparation and, and, and what happens with, with the AFC Asian Cup, but also lots of other things happening in Indian football. Uh, so we, we'll keep an eye on all, all of that as, as well. Uh, you've been watching this interview one-on-one -on -one with, with the head coach of the Indian national team on 420 Grams. And news click if you like this, and and, and we hope we uh, Igor was uh, talking earlier, asking where everyone else is. So hopefully next time we can have a, a proper adda, a proper sit down with Renidi, Ishfaq, uh, Pandit, Jaydeep, and, and the rest of the gang, and it can be a, a wider conversation. Maybe when the league uh, kicks off again. Uh, but until then, Tempo, please. Uh, until then, stay safe, take care. Thank you everyone for watching. Do like, subscribe, share as widely as possible. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.